call the meeting to order. Roll call. McCarrigan. Here. Caldwell. Here. Midlap. Here. Solomon. Here. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Three, for public information, a copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is available for review. Um, it's up on the wall there. Four, notice of changes in the agenda by the city clerk. Additions may not be made to this agenda less than 24 hours before the beginning of the meeting unless added under item five of this agenda. Do you have any changes? No changes, Your Honor. Five, citizens with business not scheduled in the, on the agenda as required by state law. No matter may be considered under this item unless council determines that the matter requires emergency action. Do we have any emergency actions? Okay. Six, closed session. Council reserves the right to enter into closed session if deemed necessary. If the item is on the agenda as per section 84-1410 of the Nebraska Revised Statutes. Seven, public comments. A, the purpose of this agenda item is to allow for public comment of items for potential discussion at a future council meeting. Comments brought to the council are for information only. The council will not take any action on the item except for referring it to staff to address for placement on a future council agenda. This comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Do we have any public comments? Okay. State your name and address, please. Uh, Rolf Hernandez. I got some material for you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, some of this stuff I may have already brought up. Okay. Thank you. Betsy. I'll let you review it real fast and then you guys are all really down. Do you want to go ahead and begin? Yeah. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate um, all the that you guys go in to do this job. I know it's hard and um, it's a heavy burden to carry for the city, but uh, I think you guys are doing a great job, amazing job, and um, thanks for having me here. Um, my purpose for coming here today is because I have been unlawfully trespassed from the Scottsdale High School District. I am not permitted to enter any property whatsoever. It made it very difficult for me to pick up my son. It made it very difficult for me to drop off my wife, who works in the high school. Uh, it makes it very difficult for me to voice my opinion at a school board meeting. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up to the school board was that recently there was a voicemail leaking out of Mr. Huck saying racial comments, um, including the skin color, um, including calling, telling people to call me, um, saying things like, take a number, if there's a problem, take a number and we'll get to them. Um, and then at the end, they boast about being great representatives of the Scottsdale High School. I say that is not true. Um, I'm going to read a couple comments here from my session here. Um, I won't play the audio out of respect, but I will read some of the comments, okay? Yeah, that Huck guy didn't, create, didn't care much about teachers not following state mandates, but cared about me wearing a beanie to hold my hair back during PE. 
They also target some white people too. They're not popular if they're not popular or friends with people that like us. Um, one says, not surprised, they also speak much differently to our children when we are not there. Um, and I, and I, I say, I go on, uh, I'm glad my kids have graduated, but I had to deal with all this when my, all this when my kids were in school, plus some. I even made a, I even made a verbal threat to the principal several years ago and did nothing but laugh. Um, pretty much the staff there are brainwashed and there is only, um, and only unless you have a check for their kids. Um, this is not acceptable. Um, they can't ban us all from board meetings. There is a culture in that high school that needs to be addressed. There is racism, sexism. There's a lot going on there. And it makes it very difficult for a parent to go up there and voice their concerns when I, my own freedom is being threatened from me. I believe as an American, I should be able to redress my government. I have been to City Hall multiple times. I even toured the place. I took a couple videos. Um, I've been to the library, no problems. Pretty much any other government of body, I have been able to go there and exercise my First Amendment of the press um, to redress my government. But unfortunately, when it comes to Scottsboro High School, I cannot. Um, I had several conversations with them, including one where Mr. Kevin Spencer chimed in a little bit, and he just blankly said, if they say that you need to go, it is gonna be time to go. There was no crime committed. I was not disorderly. I was not unruly. I like to be a pleasant person for everybody because that's what my generation and the next generation after me deserves. But it's very unconstitutional for someone to say, if you go there to redress the government, I will lock you up. It is very unfair. Where is my voice? So I'm using my voice today to come here and address my city government. Um, Ms. Jamie, respectfully, I have tried a couple times to deliver some papers to you and I understand you're a very busy woman. But as the mayor of the city, you have sworn an oath to defend the Constitution here from threats domestic, and well, domestic is the one I'm worried about, right? And a terrorist to me is somebody who dares to take our rights, our God-given rights. It is the First Amendment, a right to redress our government, the right to press, the right to freedom of speech. And that amendment has been taken from me by threat of arrest, by threat of taking my freedom away. And I'm asking you guys to please help me out to do something about that. Um, and then lastly, um, the grants that the police department received for the additional two units um, overtime, I think it is not of money well spent. I think instead of making two officers wealthier in two months, we should be putting that money towards maybe a billboard, maybe some signage, maybe a more permanent solution than trying to tax and be and find all these young children who are just trying to express themselves in the only way they can. Cruise night may not be something that's totally legal, but it is an expression of their First Amendment. Thank you, guys. All right, we have any other public comments? Okay, eight, consent calendar. Items in the consent calendar are proposed for adoption by one action for all items unless any member of the council requests that an item be considered separately. Do we have any questions or comments on the consent calendar? Okay, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion by Solomon, second by Bidlock. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please. Paul Will. Yes. Solomon. Yes. Bidlock. Yes. Jurgen. Yes. Nine, financial report. Council to receive the May 2024 financial report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Link is our finance director. Uh, not a lot that happened over the last month uh, if we look at that first page we're just going to see pretty much the same thing that's kind of been on there in the past the alarm proceeds and special projects for that 2023 hailstorm uh, and then in debt service the frank uh, paving district and, and street or paving district and sanitary sewer improvement district is is complete now uh, and then flipping over to the second page uh, general fund was the monthly change in cash was up 151,000 that was the first half of the property taxes that we received um, 
I did want to point out the negative and cemetery that uh, typically I'll do a transfer about midway through the year or whatever. So still getting my feet wet trying to figure out some of those things that happen every six months and stuff like that. So that'll happen. You'll see that in the next uh, next financial report. And in page three, I wanted to talk to you guys about that. That's a new page. That was something that basically takes everything that's back here and condenses it down into one page so you can kind of see where each department falls throughout the year, whether they're in net positive, net negative, uh, and kind of offer some, some, what doesn't offer any explanations. It's an easier way for me to explain it than writing it all down by hand and doing it. So it just condenses the information. But yeah, you can see if you look at that, most of the departments are, are in the positive um, throughout the year. Mutual fire is going to be negative. That has to do with that was that fire truck purchase um, right there. Debt service, that's the uh, the payment for the PID and SID that was completed over there on 28th. And so that just kind of sums up everything on one page so you don't have to flip through and read. You still can, but now it's all on one page. So okay. thank you. But anyway, I don't know if you guys have any questions for me, but it was a pretty quiet month. The other thing too, I guess, while I got your attention, I wrote down, wrote down some days here, budget workshop. We're going to be talking about that sometime in July, the week of the 22nd through the 26th. That was about when we did it last year. Just make a note of your calendar and then I'll get with Kevin and we'll maybe try to hammer out a couple of days that work and send out an email to, to you guys so you guys have, have that on your radar that week. But okay. didn't want to forget my note there. So. All right. We have a motion to approve the financial report. Move to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion by Colwell, second by Solomon. Any questions or comments? Thanks for the new spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah looks okay. good. Call the roll, please. Solomon. Yes. 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 Ten public hearings. Council to conduct a public hearing set for this date at 6 p.m. to consider the proposed ordinance text changes to Chapter 6, Article 6, Chapter 21, Article 1, and Chapter 25, Article 17, regarding land use fees. We'll open the public hearing. And Council Development Services Director Zach Lobbyist. Um, in May, at May Planning Commission meeting, <coughs> the Planning Commission reviewed this. <coughs> Ordinance change. Um, as you kind of see from it, uh, we updated. It. We got new permitting software, it, and it can't do the uh, current fee structure where it's a three dollar fee per notice. So, while looking to update that, um, we reviewed other cities and also um, just trying to simplify our fees. So, as you can see, um, basically plat stuff would plat fees would just be two hundred dollars flat. A rezone related ones would be three hundred dollars flat. Uh, and then in the staff report, you can see that even though we'll be increasing them, we'll still be one of the lower um, first class cities for fees. And then in addition to these changes to chapter six, um, there's just some updates to chapter 21 and chapter 25 re that uh, refer to how the fees were in the past. So, um, and with that, the Planning Commission made a positive recommendation on approval for this uh, ordinance change. Zach and I read correctly, these have not been updated since the 1990s? Yeah, current fees have been placed since 1995. 95, okay. Do you have any other questions? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. 11, resolution and ordinances. A, council to consider action on the first reading of the ordinance amending land use permit fee. An ordinance of the City of Scottsbluff, Nebraska, amending the Scottsbluff Municipal Code relating to land use permit fees in Chapter 6, Article 6, Section 29, Chapter 21, Article 1, Section 65 and 68, and Chapter 25, Article 17, Section 3, repealing the prior sections of the Municipal Code, providing for an effective date, and providing for publication in pamphlet form. B, Council to consider action on the first reading of the ordinance relating to fees for fire plan review and fire inspections. Okay, Mayor and Council, the fire department's uh, doing the same thing as what Zach just described. Uh, 
with the fire review. Um, they conveniently had a fire 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah. and left. So uh, they're, they're trying to do the same thing. These fees have been around since the 90s as well, I think 1999. So they're just updating them. They'll uh, be in line with everybody else's uh, across the state. All right. An ordinance of the City of Scottsbluff, Nebraska, amending and revising section 6-6-10.1 and 6-6-10.2 of the Scottsbluff Municipal Code relating to fees for plan review and fire inspections to determine compliance with the Fire Prevention Code, repealing prior sections, providing for an effective date, and providing for publication in pamphlet form. All right, 12 bids and awards. Council to discuss and consider action on awarding the bid for City Hall hail damage repair to ironclad construction in the amount of $131,834.80. Your Honor and Council, we uh, open bids on June, Tuesday, June 11th here at City Hall. We did have two bids. Ironclad was the lowest bid. Uh, it came in a little bit less than the engineer estimates. Um, it, was, it was nice that we're starting to get more than one bid. So uh, we uh, are recommending that uh, you award the bid to Ironclad Construction. And will the roofing um, continue to be still? Yes. Like we have on top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be a replacement of this roof. Okay. All right. Do you have any other questions or comments? Do they think they'll be able to start this summer, or is there too much work going on right now? No, I, th I think they'll start and finish this summer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we have more to do, so this is just the first two. Okay. We did public safety and now this one. All right. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion by Colwell, second by Bidlock. Any other questions or comments? Nice to see two local bids. Mm -hmm. Call the roll, please. Bidla. Yes. Caldwell. Yes. McCarrigan. Yes. Solomon. Yes. 13 council reports, informational only. This item is intended for council members to update and inform other council members of meetings attended since the last city council meeting. Any updates? I uh, got a couple. Uh, Humane Society did their annual budget report and the numbers looked really good. They had a large estate donation. They're gonna kind of set that aside for now, let it build in the CD and they've got some future plans, maybe three to five years out, they might do use that money for. But overall, it's looking pretty good for them. On the zoo, uh, the new director's been on duty for about a week. They have a new head keeper. Uh, the new director's Kathy Randall and um, they have got some new babies. So the swan has new, uh, six new babies. Um, zebra's got a new baby coming. Uh, the new baby zebra will probably arrive late July or August. Uh, the mountain lion um, has started to go into the cage a little bit and they're kind of working in phases. It needs to get acclimated to being around people because it's real still skittish from being caught in the wild. It's very comfortable with the keeper and they work on training it so it'll come up to the side of the uh, enclosure so they can do inspections and give it vaccinations. But the general public, you know, has no clue who we are. So they're getting it used slowly and it should be introduced to the whole exhibit, you know, in the near future, they'll give it the whole space. Still fairly, fairly young. It's young, um, it's, it's growing weight, so health-wise it's doing good. Um, and there's about two keepers that it trusts right now, and then of course everybody else is gonna take a while. So that's, that's good. Um, they've had some new uh, people sponsor uh, exhibits. This is the Bobcat exhibit. And so they're very thankful for everyone stepping up and helping with that. And so that really helps with the expenses. Um, and then they do have a shovel grant which a lot of this construction that you guys seen done 
is through that shovel grant. So it's a matching grant and they have $130,000 left they can use, but they need matching funds in order to actually put it to work. Otherwise it's just gonna be wasted money. Um, so they've got a little over 130,000 they can still use and the next goal is to redo um, the whole area where the birds are in those corn cribs. And the goal is to get those out, which was an AZA request and put in some new uh, exhibit space for birds. So that's it. Okay. Anyone else? Heartland Express on Thursday. And then a welcoming communities conference on Thursday as well. Thursday. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion by Colwell, second by Solomon. Call the roll, please. Yes. Solomon. Yes. Colwell. Yes. Good luck. Yes.